Thanks to Audible for supporting Don't Blame Me. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. That's more than half off the regular price. Go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me today our guest is an Instagram icon. You missed it earlier. Melissa was fangirling. So hard. Honestly, hella hard. This is Alexandra Tweeten from Bye Felipe. Hello. Oh my, if you guys aren't following this Instagram account, I mean, honestly, it's one of those accounts that you're probably already following. Mm -hmm. And now there's a face behind it. If you haven't seen before. Yeah. Can you explain to us what the account is like? Um, So Bye Felipe is an Instagram account that I started in 2014 and it calls out men who turn hostile when rejected or ignored. Which is a lot of men. Yes. (laughs) As we know. Yeah. So it's like I post screenshots of terrible messages that women get, um, not only on dating apps, but like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, text messages. Yeah. Like gaming apps. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeez. It's like everywhere. My favorite is when they're like, I'm going to send this message to all the girls that you follow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My friend, Laura Lux, <laughs> she did that last year. Um, this guy sent her a dick pic and then she was like, you have two minutes to tell me why I shouldn't send this <laughs> to every, every woman that follows you. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. It's been one of my favorite deep dive stocks. I got like embarrassingly Mm -hmm. far, like in like the depths of the archives the Uh other night, just dying. It's (laughs) so funny. And even we had a caller on the episode with, uh, uh, Nikki Limo, who a guy that she dated was like, then like being a complete asshole to her afterwards. And I'm like, see if this happens Mm -hmm. in a day to day life. Yeah. Because men are the worst. (laughs) They really are. Yeah. I've started saying, I was like, it's hard being the superior gender. (laughs) <laughs> it is hard we have to like birth the it's children tough. and also like teach you how to like human yeah like this is how you human morally they just don't know they don't know no one they, teaches them these things no no not at all which is like so sad for how much money and like pr- privilege and power that they have yeah but they're like I don't know what to do exactly You're like okay <laughs> giant babies exactly god terrible um well guys this is an advice podcast don't blame me um along with Melissa sup 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 what up hey hey um, well, this isn't a call in. This isn't. It is. I just said this isn't a call in advice show. It is a call in advice show. If you guys haven't listened before and you want to call in or you have listened and you just some shits hitting the fan in your life and you want some advice, give us a call at 310-694-0976. And international listeners, you can email us at meganpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we're about to give some advice to people. And you can we can we can be don't worry, you can be mean. if You need to cool. be mean. All right. I usually feel like I need to be mean. A lot of tough love needs to <laughs> happen. A cunty, as you like oh, to cunty. say. Oh, cunty. Yeah. Yes. I'm a little cunty. Mm-hmm. Everyone should be a little cunty. Good. Gotta good. regain the power of that word. Yeah. Like, it's good to be a little cunty. Yeah. Ready? I'm ready. My body is ready. Hi, Megan. I'm 21 years old, and I'm in my last year of college. I don't have a boyfriend right now or even any potential prospects, which is kind of where the problem comes in. Um, every guy I've liked in the past has been completely wrong for me. And to be honest, I've liked guys that I haven't even dated more than guys that I actually have, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. I've been single for a long time now, and I just can't seem to find anyone I have an emotional connection with lately. My friends say that I'm too picky, and I think I am kind of picky, but for me, it's all about just how I feel about a person. Um, and I just haven't really had that connection with anyone recently. I've been using some dating apps mostly just for fun, but I'm wondering if maybe it wouldn't hurt to actually go on a few dates. I have a couple of friends who have had successful dates from Tinder, so maybe I should give a shot, but part of me is like, no, if it's right, you'll meet someone in person when you're supposed to. So I guess I'm just wondering if I should start actually trying to look for dates and actually try to play the field a little bit, or if I should just kind of wait and see if I meet someone who I have a connection with. I don't know. I think a lot of people might be in the same situation. So any advice would be super helpful. I love your podcast. You have to get on a dating app. Yeah. I mean, where the fuck else are you going to meet somebody? (laughs) I mean, yeah, I dating apps, but I think, I think they're kind of like almost on the way out. Like, are people, yeah, are people, (gasps) 
I don't know. know. Are you in a relationship? No. Okay. I'm do single. you use dating apps? Yes. And you, do you feel like they're on the way out though? Well, I don't know. I mean, I use them, but I just, it's I like a game. Yeah. Like I, Candy Crush. Like anyone who's on the dating apps, they're just going on so many dates and they're just like in it. You yeah. Know? And I don't know. It's like being a professional dater. Yeah. I mean, I will it's a say, lot of work. I think there's varying ways you can use dating apps. Like mm -hmm. I've had friends who, two of my best friends, they've had like, like they are some gung ho commitment people. And they both had like had their single phase, gotten out of relationships, really like enjoyed it, played the field in like a casual way, like mm -hmm. going out to bars with their friends and like no pressure, like not trying to get like locked down or anything like that. Um, which I guess is not a great term, but like not trying to like yeah. settle down with anyone. Yeah. And in, so then when they decided they wanted to date people, they went on dating apps and they took it like a full-time goddamn job. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, their scheduling was impeccable. Yeah. The, the younger one was doing, it was like two a days. I yeah. was like, dear God. Yeah. You know, no. Cause she's, she's a Virgo. She's very uh -huh. great time management. <laughs> like she's so like, it was in insane. And they both ended up meeting people and wow. like, it was great. But for her, it was kind of like the, the younger one, she, she was it, it, like, didn't necessarily enjoy the process of going mm -hmm. on so many dates, but mm -hmm. it was like, she wasn't getting too invested in yeah. one person at each time. That's important. Because then it becomes yeah. like anybody can kind of fit that mold. If they're the only, you're, you don't have no one yeah. to compare them to. Mm -hmm. um, even when my boyfriend and I started dating, like I immediately, as soon as he was like, I have feelings for you. I'm like, cool, me too. I'm gonna date a bunch of other people at the same time we start dating. So I can figure yeah. out if I actually like you or if you're like, you're the only person who likes me. And I like, yeah. like I like our That's relationship, good. not like I, I want the relationship with you. Like you mm -hmm. like texting somebody and having somebody to call and like hook up with as opposed yeah. to like the person. But then I also have like when I had dating apps, I didn't really go on dates with them. But like one of the reasons why I knew my now boyfriend was single is because I saw him on a dating app mm -hmm. and a couple of my other friends. That's been the same thing. It's been like a mutual friend yeah. that they've then seen on a dating app and been like, oh, yeah. they're looking for that. OK, cool. And then I also have a couple of guy friends who they don't feel super comfortable going up to girls at like bars or places anymore because they're like, I don't know if they're single, yeah. but if I know a girl's on a dating app, I know that she a is single and a will want to is more likely to want a relationship than like yeah. somebody else. So like I'm only, they feel like they're going after like the right pool of people. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, a dick's not going to fall on your lap or yeah. a vagina or I mean, whatever you, you want. You do have to put yourself out there. Like yeah. I think my strategy in like throughout my twenties was going on so many dates. Mm -hmm. Um, I was on all of the dating apps. I've been on and off dating apps since like 2010. <gasps> what? what dating so app like, was 2010? I went Match. on, com. I went on okay. Craigslist. Dates. Shut the <gasps> fuck up. Oh my God. And this you're still before, with us. That This was before the, Tinder. This was before, was this before the okay. Craigslist no, what was it was killer? not. Craigslist I think that killer. was like 2007. <laughs> okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't like the the shady yeah. Craigslist. It was like the actual like the dating section okay. that we that... wrote out a profile. <gasps> Were there pictures? And was like, yeah. Okay. That's and cool. I met like a couple of people, but, and I, I was writing about it for Ms. Magazine. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. I was an intern I feel at the safer. time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so shortly after that, I, I got an okay Cupid mm -hmm. and I, um, dated a guy for two and a half years. So, I mean, you can find, yeah, you can find people on there, but, um, yeah, I, so dated for two and a half years, then we broke up. Um, and that's when Tinder kind of mm -hmm. came out and, that's a wild ride. It is a wild, <laughs> wild ride. <laughs> but you it's it makes it possible for you to, you know, find yeah. so many people. And I met so many people that I would have never have met, mm -hmm. met in real life. Um, so yeah. you can be going on like two dates a week yeah. or whatever. And and that's fine. But um I think really the the thing that is the best advice is to just do something, get out there, mm -hmm. do something like get a hobby, do whatever you want to do, better yourself. Mm -hmm. And then people will be attracted to that. Totally. Ooh, that's great. Advice. And also yeah. like get out of your like physical, like your bubble. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, if you go to the same like four bars with yeah. your same friends yeah. and you see the same people, like nobody's going to pop out of the woodwork that you yeah. like. It's not like a romantic comedy. We're like, Oh my God, you've been hiding in plain sight <laughs> this whole time. Yeah. And also I would say for somebody who like, if you're just swiping a lot on dating apps and also this is me giving you advice that I definitely did not take at this time, uh -huh. but I'm not saying I wish I did. Cause I'm very happy in my relationship, but 
one of the issues I had also being an incredibly picky person, my best friend one time yeah. told me, she's like, I'm really afraid you're going to die alone because like, <laughs> you hate everybody. And I was like, same. yeah, me too. I, mean, I was in, terrified of that. Yeah. I was like, it's going to happen because I wasn't mm -hmm. not to be cocky. I wasn't worried about people not liking me. I yeah. was like so used to like three months into a relationship being like, I hate you and I never want to see you again. What <laughs> happened? And so, uh, but I also w was the same thing is like, it was more about a connection and you people, when they portray themselves on dating apps, you're, you're not getting the, no. you have to go out with them to people see. People are really bad at portraying themselves. And they the, have no self-awareness. And the ones that are good at portraying themselves, <laughs> yeah. you meet them in person. You're like, you're Yikes. the worst. Yeah. Like it's not a great representation. Yeah. And also like the greatest guys have the worst fucking dating profiles. <laughs> yes, it's and true. you're not going to know <laughs> of a connection until you get to know somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm also like, I've only really dated friends. Like I've been friends with someone and then been like oh no I'm so in love with you oh, and I get that yeah. the, like that connection needs to be there mm -hmm. but you need to like build those connections with more people like you're not gonna have yeah. a connection with somebody at the same place that you go every single day yeah because that you person probably out. won't break show up bubble. there yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. So put yourself out there, try them out. And bad dates make for great stories. You'll get yeah. closer and closer and closer. Yeah. But also don't get, don't get anxious, like, mm -mm. or you're freaked out that you're yeah, not going to meet anyone. So young. Because it's like, don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll meet someone. Yeah. Don't settle. It's yeah. okay to be picky. As long as it's not like the list yeah. of like, one of my friends has a friend who has like the longest list ever. And I'm like, you're gonna die alone. Like it's, there's like a height requirement, a hair mm -hmm. color requirement, oh. a, like a hometown requirement, how many siblings a they'd have. Oh, that's too much. Just, oh my God. It just, like needs to be from the West coast, like relatively close to like where I grew up. So then when we like, if we did Christmases together, be, I was like, this person doesn't exist. And also like, you're not factoring in the fact, like, what if you don't like him? Like, yeah. like these are these just like facts about somebody, like a fact is not a personality. Yeah. So yeah. As long as it's just about like the connection and the feelings, I don't think, yeah, I think everybody's yeah. picky in that sense. Yeah. No one wants to date someone that they're like, you're boring and I hate you. Exactly. You like want to have something to talk about. Best of luck. Happy swiping. On to the next. So I'm 23 and I have a really big issue with comparing myself to other people, particularly other women. Um, I can date this back to, I want to say, like as early as grade, but definitely in high school and especially when I started dating, I would compare myself to the girls that preceded me with my boyfriends at the time or, you know, people that they liked while they were pursuing me or things like that. So... I've always compared my looks. I've always compared my personal successes, um, you know, things that they're able to do that I'm not able to do. And I'm finding that I'm very, very hard on myself. And while I can recognize that I'm being unfair and that, you know, I don't know their struggles and I only see their highlights, it's still, it's very hard for me not to compare myself. And I'm actually, I'm a teacher now. It's my second year teaching. And... I'm starting to do it with my coworkers and the other people on my grade level. I compare what I do in my classes to what they do in their classes and, you know, how they teach it. And, like, I know that's unfair to me because they've been teaching for 10 years at this point, and I'm literally in year two. So if you have any advice on how to, you know, kind of give myself a little bit better perspective and, you know, kind of cut down on all the comparing that I do... Um, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, I definitely have a lot of advice about that. Oh my God, please take it away. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really good that you're acknowledging that you have this, this mm -hmm. problem and that it's affecting you because it's really important. Um, and it's something that everyone does. Yeah. Like everyone at some point like compares themselves to other people mm -hmm. and then feels bad about it. But you have to just acknowledge that you're doing that and then change the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Like that's really the solution. I remember um, when I first moved to L.A., I um, was working in an internship and I would always compare myself to the other people and be like, oh, they got this piece that they're writing mm -hmm. and like I didn't get it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it makes you feel really terrible. But you have to reframe it in your mind and just think, um, you know, everyone is on their own journey if you, it's actually really helpful to replace like the jealous feeling with, um, just trying to be happy for that person mm -hmm. and thinking about like, 
hey, if if I like support them, they'll support me when it's my turn. And, yeah. um, you know, genuinely feeling happy for people that you know are your friends. Yeah. Um, but you have to consciously recognize change the it and then change your way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I mean, first of all, this is like you said, this is so normal. Like, yeah. I think especially with women just in general like from a really young age you're pitted against each other just for everything like you're you're just competing and whether like that pressure a comes from just like society in general but also like parents and teachers and like things like that and like I I've got ADHD and I didn't same my parents wouldn't medicate me when (laughs) I was younger and like I would constantly have like teachers and be like comparing me to like, well, see, do you see how this student, other student did it? And because yeah. I was self conscious like they didn't necessarily mean anything b- bad by it, yeah. but because I was self-conscious about the fact that I couldn't like focus and stay on track, mm-hmm. I then would resent these other people for what I deemed being smarter than me when in reality, mm-hmm. they just like, I was at like a learning disadvantage. But I think the thing that I've found um, that also really helps is just talking about it like you seem like you're you you said that you're aware of the fact that like people are posting their highlight reels Mm -hmm. one of the most liberating things in the world that you can do not saying like make a self-deprecating joke because like that's totally my brand which isn't totally like healthy Mm -hmm. all the time either but the second that you can just like be upfront and honest with one of those like one of maybe some of your work with like i just want to be like come clean to you. Like I've been feeling like so jealous of like your teaching style. And I am so inspired by what you do. And I think like everything you're doing is so great. And I just, and you can even apologize. Like I want to apologize. Like if I've been kind of like treating you in a way that it's been a little, uh, like hostile, it's just because I've been really jealous of all of this stuff. And I guarantee you, if you do that in any circumstance, someone's going to be like, Oh my God, why are you jealous of me? Like if I see these things in you, like this is something I would have never assumed that you were like anxious or felt inadequate in like any thing at all. Like I was talking to, I like made a joke about like having like crippling social anxiety with like one of, I was with one of my close friends and then one of her friends, her friend was like, wait, you have social anxiety. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, I'm a mess. My other friend's like, oh yeah, she's an emotion. Like she's like a complete mess. And she was like, oh my God, that makes me feel so good because I literally thought that you had it all together. Yeah. And I was like, that's so flattering. Like, thank you so much that you thought that. But as soon as you start talking about that kind of stuff, I think just in general, people put on such a brave face and everybody wants to look like they've got their shit together. The second that you are like, hey, by the way, anybody else out there? Like, I don't really have it all together. You're going to be like 40 people going, oh my God, thank God someone finally said it. I don't either. Mm -hmm. Because you're comparing yourself to not, it's like, it's like- You you, don't know that you're not in that person's other head. Those aren't real people. You're you're putting everyone on a pedestal and you're glamorizing. Like, this is what I'm comparing. You're not comparing yourself to your ex's girlfriends. You're comparing them to an Instagram profile and like five pictures yeah and you're not comparing these other teachers like based on like their actual specific merit you're comparing yeah. like what you see and that and yeah. people people hide their flaws yeah. like actively i covered like, up lots of zits we today all do same and yeah you can't just really try not to compare yourself mm-hmm. to other people just say to yourself they're on their own journey they're at a different place mm-hmm. and like you can't control like yeah. you know sometimes some someone else might be having a great day and you're having a bad day but then other days you're you're like having yeah. a great day so it's like and you'll never stop like yeah no matter where you get to be there's not going to be a point in which you will feel totally satisfied and you'll feel like you're at the top and yeah. that nobody like that you're winning like mm-hmm. it's an ongoing uphill battle that is going to be so fucking exhausting. Yeah. So now just know, like, do I want to spend the rest of my life comparing myself to other people yeah. or do I not? Cause there's yeah. always going to be someone that you want to compare yourself to, but yeah. then also know you're also in that narrative of all these other people. Yeah. And you don't want your friends, like think about the people that you really care about and you love. Do you want them spending their time comparing their lives to yours? When no. you could be like, actually some of these things aren't that great. I yeah. wish you weren't like feeling bad about yourself because of something that I was that I'm doing to kind of like boost what it looks like from the outside. Yeah. And think about all the people that are probably jealous of you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like (laughs) that's how it works. Like (laughs) it's like, there's this terrible account on Instagram that I love called celeb face. And it's just pictures of celebrities who Photoshopped their pictures. (laughs) And like, and like in the most ridiculous way, it's like the people that you consider yourself, like you consider to be the most beautiful people in the yeah. world. There was something like, A, obviously it's sad, but there's something yeah. also like a little bit like, oh wow, mm-hmm. this doesn't change for anybody. Yeah. Like <laughs> even like Victoria's Secret models, like they want to Photoshop like their right eyebrow slightly higher than their left. Like yeah. 
everybody feels those things. So just know that you're not alone in it, but it's not, it's not productive and it's not going to make you do a better job at anything. Yeah. I think the thing that has helped me the most is like consciously taking note of it and then saying like, no, I'm not going to be jealous. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy, genuinely happy for that person. And it's helped a lot. Yeah. I think you'll be good. You got this. Best of luck. Crush it. Live your life. Okay. On to the next. I'm 22 years old. Um, I am currently engaged. Oh, I've been engaged to my fiance for a little over a year now. Uh, we've been together in a relationship for two years. Um, so yeah, we're planning a wedding. It's really exciting. Um, but one of the big hurdles that we have still in our relationship is figuring out how to, to overcome like, on, like dishonesty and I don't mean that we lie to each other, but there are times in a relationship where it does happen in small occurrences. Like if something happens at work and he doesn't want to tell me, then he just doesn't bring it up. And it's not like he's telling me something different that then that didn't happen, but he's just not telling me things. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's something that we should figure out now and we do try to talk through everything we were very honest with each other with the majority of the stuff that we that we go through um it's just every once in a while when these small little things come up and it's usually because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings um he doesn't want to make me upset or make me worry about something that I don't need to worry about or that's not necessary for me to worry about um but it is something that we struggle with and it is something that stress like puts stress on our relationship. And I don't want that to go into our marriage when we're, you know, actually married. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, it's, it doesn't seem like, like that big of a thing, but, but (sighs) I'm really sensitive to this. Okay. (laughs) No, but no, no, take it away. Take it away. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I mean, the lying about things is, mm-hmm. is like something you're definitely going to want to deal with before you get married. Yeah. <laughs> like you got to you get the you got to get that squared away. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like the way nicer v- version of me. Caller. Um, <laughs> this is like what this is like what I in relationships like my boyfriends would have wanted me to say when I like talked about them lying to me. But I'm more like the you're a lying the you're a lying piece of shit and you need to figure this out. So you, the thing is, is like the lying about not wanting to hurt somebody Yeah, is the lying is what hurts. And that's something yeah. that for me, like somebody trusted honesty is like the biggest thing ever. I mean, as you can hear on the podcast, I'm just so I'm, I am, I am too honest. I am honest to a fault. You ask me how I feel about something. I'm going to say it. Mm-hmm. And also like, I can't. I don't like lying and hiding things like my ex-boyfriend texts me and I'll like tell my boyfriend, but by the way, I just want you to know my ex-boyfriend texted me and I'll be like, why, why are you telling me? I'm like, I don't know. I just felt weird not telling you. He's like, oh, okay. I don't but, need to know that. Yeah. But. <laughs> but like, there's like, for me, like, that's like, I would rather. Yeah. Overshare. <laughs> I would always rather overshare. And I think the thing that I've learned is if someone's comfortable lying about small things, they tend to be comfortable lying about big things. And just because these lies have been smaller right now, A, these are the lies that you know about. Mm -hmm. And B, that these are just the instances in which they happen to have been small. But lying's a habit. Yeah. And it's it's just an issue because it's... it when, When you get used to even white lies, it just means that like when something happens, your automatic reaction isn't to tell the truth. Like you have that one to three mm-hmm. second delay that you decide what you're going to say yeah. and like how you're going to like spin this or whatever. And so you I, personally, the thing that I've learned through this is like the only thing I like wish there was a way to like snap, make it quick. But the only way is time. Like it needs to be like, OK, here was the period in our life and where you lied about things and sure it was to protect me and to like not Mm -hmm. hurt my feelings. But now you know that what really hurts my feelings is the lying. And also if we want to be married and have a family together, like these decisions, you don't get to withhold me from them or like these life things. Like we're a team. Like we have to make decisions for our family together. Like we have, we're going to be a unit and you don't get to protect me from something that I'm legally like a bound in. Mm-hmm. And you need to have time and separation from that. So then that becomes a period in your life where that was happening. And then you have another period in your life where things are going a lot better, but you need like, 
you need the time. So it's like in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's no, because I don't think there's a way to, there's not a way to gain trust until the situations occur. And he makes the choice to tell you the truth as opposed to just hiding it from you. Yeah. I think you definitely look into therapy, therapy. because you're going to have to work through this with a lot of communication mm -hmm. and talking to each other about it. Yeah. And probably with the help of a professional and, um, yeah. yeah. Letting him know that like, Hey, if you tell me the truth, I'm not going to freak mm -hmm. out or, you know, yeah. Um, working through it. Yeah. And it's just, we, I, I implemented this thing of being like, this is like, I'm like, okay, so I know you're lying right now about something or you're hiding something. You've got five minutes just to tell me what it is. And I'm not allowed to be mad at you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy. You told the truth kind yeah. of a thing. And that like that it helps like you have, but it's, again, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. It's like the same thing. It's as anything. It, it's, it's a habit that you get used to and get comfortable with. And it usually comes from people who either got punished a lot and like, were really afraid and like needed to hide when something went wrong or mm -hmm. never got punished and have this huge fear of someone being mad at them. Mm -hmm. And I think you need, you're allowed to be upset and angry, uh, with him and yeah not hurting your feelings is the first time excuse, but it's not yeah. like a constant thing. Yeah. Because if you can't learn from this, that's also right now it affects you. But if you get married, that affects your kids yeah. and it's, Oh, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just, I, at least that's my thought of being yeah. like, I wouldn't be in a marriage unless I was comfortable being like, you're going to be someone that like, not only can I count on and trust and know that like, you're not hiding anything from me. And it's like completely honest, but I'm not going to do that to like humans that don't exist yet yeah. or like do exist and are in my life yet to like be kids or whatever. And like, have you have that presence on them too? So mm -hmm. I say couples therapy and then yeah. Especially wait before up, you get married. Wait, I mean, wait, did you plan the wedding? <laughs> Can you wait? Like, I just don't also, again, coming from somebody who like, I am you girl, mm -hmm. we are the same. You're just nicer. Um, there's a lot of, like there's a lot of resentment there. And you then, once you've been lied to enough times, you start to look for it. And then there gets to be, and also hopefully I'm not fucking alone on this. There gets to be kind of this high when you're right. So sometimes mm -hmm. you want to be right too, because mm -hmm. you're like, no, no, I need to like be satiated because I know I'm not crazy. Yeah. And you need that, that all of that dust needs to settle because even you don't want to get into a marriage with him trying to earn trust back. It needs to be like, we're good now. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. So I would hold off on it because also isn't planning a wedding like super stressful. That's not going to mm -hmm. be, he's yeah. going to lie to you about liking the flowers. He's going to lie mm -hmm. about other little things. Yeah. Go to therapy like ASAP. Yeah. Like right now. Yeah. He doesn't need to tell you if he like <laughs> my boyfriend, I asked him if he like, I dyed my hair and I was like, Oh, it's really like, I'm not sure. It's like super blonde. And he was like, Whoa. And I was like, uh, okay, that kind of hurt my feelings. He was like, I don't really know what else you wanted me to say. And I was like, Miyuki, cool. And then I was like, so this is the time in which like, you just need to be like, I, it it's great. Yeah. Like I'm like, you can even just like, just that. If that. you like it, then I like it. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, he just made up for it. Boys are also just like stupid sometimes. Like what? I didn't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike it. And I was like, well, do you know how to say that you like it? Yeah. But yeah. So you know, it's going to be okay. You just got to have some, have some, give it some breathing room. So you don't murder him in his sleep. No, she's nicer than me. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then hide the body. And then, <laughs> oh my God. We have to, we have to, yeah, <laughs> we fill have you to in. You. We got to fill you in on a call we had. <laughs> Whew. Okay. You guys, it's time for a break and we will be back very soon. What would it look like if we all listened more? Listening to audiobooks motivates us, inspires us, and even brings us closer together. For our audience, Audible is offering a free audiobook when you start a 30-day trial. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Just go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500 and browse their unmatched selection of audio content. Start your 30-day trial, download an audiobook for free, and start listening. It's that easy. There's no better place to listen than Audible because now Audible members get even more. Exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible Originals, and more. And now with Audible Originals, you can experience even more custom content made exclusively for Audible members. I love Audible, as you guys know. I'm currently listening to Becoming by my queen, our lord and savior, Michelle Obama. Oh, 
guys, she's just, she's just amazing. I'm sure if you guys haven't already listened to this book, I mean, I feel like probably a lot of you have, but you have to. It's so, 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 so incredibly, incredibly good. And if you've already listened to that book, I mean, I always like browsing based on TV shows that I've watched and like, oh, what would, or movies that are coming out and finding out if I can read them before I watch like the TV show or the movie. Every month as an Audible member, you get one credit good for any audiobook you choose, plus two Audible originals from a changing selection you can't get anywhere else. Audible members also get access to audio fitness and health workouts created exclusively for Audible. Plus, your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Didn't like your audiobook? Exchange it, no questions asked. Start a 30-day trial and your first audiobook is free. Go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. Okay, everybody, we are back from our break. I hope that was good for you. (laughs) God, that went dirty. Uh, Okay, let's play the next call. So I'm 22 years old and I'm calling because I wanted to get some of your advice on... um, this kind of topic, I feel like when I go out with my friends, I have different groups of friends, um, and I like to feel like we're all beautiful. But there are some nights, like this last weekend, where I met the CJ, and I really liked him. I thought we were vibing. And the second he let, met my beautiful, beautiful best friend, I saw his attraction and attention go towards her immediately, even though she wasn't asking for it, and she wasn't really trying. And... As much self-esteem I can have myself and love and acceptance and knowing how smart and beautiful I am, it does hurt me um, to have that happen and to not have it happen just once. Uh, almost like being the dust in a way that doesn't date, it doesn't date it ugly happens. I was wondering what your advice was, was coping with being the ugly friend sometimes, um, especially when it comes to dating and I mean, that makes me worried. Like, if I do find a guy I like, do I just not bring back my beautiful best friend until later? Um, you know, you think. I used to exclusively date my best, one of my best friends, her like sloppy seconds and guys that she wasn't into in middle school. Cause she was, I mean, she's still gorgeous, <laughs> but like, she was like, you know, like when like no offense to any middle schoolers are listening, like there is such a, it's middle school is black and white. You're either like yeah. so pretty or like you have transition lenses and you wear like rainbow toe socks with flip flops and a tiara to school every day. Me. <laughs> um, and like, there's no in between. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's like, you're either like, like, how are you in middle school? You are yeah. beautiful. Like, there is no like in between. And so she was that. Mm-hmm. Um, she literally looked like Alexis Bledel from like Sister of the Traveling Pants. Like, she's Greek and she's just like fucking gorgeous. And I used to just like literally exclusively date the, the guys that she wasn't that into. And mm-hmm. afterwards, um, I, I mean, this is like, is it like kind of like the last call. It's yeah, the comparison. It's a comparison, thing. and it's also it's. <sighs> nobody thinks that they're hot shit all the time. No. And even the friends that you're like, wow, she's so pretty. And she's like, not even trying. I guarantee you there's moments where she feels that about you. Yeah. And also not to make this about the guys, because like, A, I think you really do need to work on the self esteem thing. Um, But like, you're not attracted to every, like you can find somebody like attractive, but you're not into like, you know what I mean? Like there's not, not every guy, a don't date DJs. No. <laughs> like I already Run was like, that was far like, away. a bad okay, idea. That's, that's like, the first thing. That was like, no DJs. No, fuck the, no, don't, don't fuck, fuck the, the DJs. Don't fuck no. the DJs. No. Be done with Say, them. Musicians. Yeah. No, don't no. do that either. Drummers. No, 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 <laughs> no. And surprisingly, Wall Street, a lot of Coke. Don't do that one either. Um, surprisingly. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't go to college. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I already didn't watch any of those shows either. But I I think like, know that that's anybody who is into you and attracted to you, like you can find other people attracted and not be attracted to them. Mm -hmm. Also, the most attractive thing ever is confidence, even if you kind of have to fake it. It really, really is. Like, And you don't want to date anyone that's not into you. Yeah, or who's into your, like, yeah. Like that's a deal breaker. Yeah, like he automatically has like a one. No, he has no ties to you right now, but he had a wandering eye if he was already talking to you. And that's like, there's no, there's just not time for that. Like, no. and also no, you know, hot girls rolling squats. Like yeah. your friends with like, you see like really, really beautiful groups of women. Their yeah. friends are all really like gorgeous, beautiful people. And that's something like you don't need, you're not competing with them. Like that's, 
it, if yeah. anything, that's like such a twisted way of making these guys not look like jackasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like your friends aren't doing anything and you know that your friends aren't doing anything, but like, this is a problem of like a couple outlier douchey guys. Yeah. Nothing to do with the fact that like you're deeming yourself the ugly friend. Yeah. And like, neither of you should be wanting to date and any of those no. guys. Mm-hmm. Because Especially they've, they've shown you DJ. Yeah. They've shown you who they are. In the first like five D-bags. minutes. Yeah. Like, oh my, yeah. I, you don't want that anyway. No, it's, it's, it's not a good guy at all. And yeah, there's, there's, again, yeah, there's different, everybody has a different type and you shouldn't be worried about it. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. just like try to move on right away. Just be like, Fuck that guy. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you've had a, ba- a couple of bad experiences that you're afraid of having again, which I totally get. Like that feels super oh, shitty yeah. and you never want to feel inferior um, to somebody that you like really love and you really yeah. care about and respect and someone, yeah, you don't want to ever feel that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't implement like, Oh, I'm not going to introduce them to my friend for a while. So they don't see like, that's yeah. a may, like, if you need to, whatever you need to do to feel confident if that means like you don't really feel your best when you're like going out with your girlfriends and like flirting with guys there then maybe like go out with your friends like that but don't have that be the only way that you try and meet yeah. people if you feel don't like have that be the goal yeah if you feel like you're on your a game when it's just you and you're like this is my stand-up routine like i'm crushing mm-hmm. it i'm great then meet people that way like mm-hmm. whatever way is not going to make you feel insecure and gross yeah i think that's what you need to do I think that's a good thing. I also saw this segment on The Real, which is my favorite show. Um, and it was one girl. This was a, she was like one of the three sisters. The sister who is the bride was getting married. She literally was like not drugging her sisters, but like feeding them like mean girls, calteen bars, essentially making them protein shakes and made them each gain like 20 pounds before her wedding. Cause she wanted to, yes. And then afterwards, like girls. yes, literally. <laughs> and then team board, afterwards yeah. she was just like, well, I mean, they lost all the weight after the wedding. And she like wrote a piece about it. Like it wasn't one of the sisters. It was the girl who did it. And was like, yeah, that's like, I mean, like I, it's my wedding day. Like it's important for me to look good. Like I don't want them to be like outshining me and they lost the weight. Why does it matter? I'm like that person <laughs> oh is my terrifying. God. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That I cannot is, imagine you have one of my sisters is. doing that. If one of my no. sisters did that, I have to smack them so hard. Honestly, if one of my friends didn't look, if I was getting married, one of my friends didn't look great in a bridesmaid's dress, like whether it's like color or anything, I'd be like, let's get one where you look like yeah, better. Yeah. Where you, you want millions. everyone to look yes. good. There's millions of dresses. I want my dresses. friends to look hot yeah. always. Like you never, I never want to, oh my God. And then no. you got to look back on your, on the pictures and they're, yes. they're your pictures. Yeah. Now. That None of them no are sense. good. No. No. And then you have your like she's sisters, got, like oh, not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's got mental issues yeah. going on. It was crazy. It was, yeah. I was, I was not. That's insane. It was, it was, isn't that fucking crazy? Yeah. Like my friends can have their tits out. I don't give a shit. Like you can look so goddamn hot. I am always like, just don't wear when white. I go out with my, with hot friends, I'm so proud of them. Oh my just God. Like, right. Just like, look at these I was like, beautiful look women. Look at my girls. Look yeah. how pretty they are. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's what you need. You need to to hype everybody else up because then they'll hype you up too and you'll feel so good. Yep. I'm 19 and a sophomore in college. Um, So I basically got on a dating app during the winter break, like last winter break, with absolutely no intent of anything coming from it. I matched with this guy. He was a senior in college at the time. And we talked about the whole Christmas break. It was just flirting and hanging out because I told him that, I don't, I didn't really know what I was on the app for and that I didn't really want to be in a relationship. Um, the funny thing is I was lying to him and myself. So I've never had a boyfriend and every time a guy would show interest, like in high school, whether I had a crush on them or not, I would just freeze and shut down. Like I would get super nervous and yeah. Um, I mean, it's a fear of being vulnerable, you know, letting people see that I'm not some heartless bitch. Um, that's a whole other story. Four months ago, no, not four months ago. Four months go by, and we kept talking. He's literally the cutest person ever and has such a genuine soul. I do not have one of those. Um, so bottom line, I let him scare me away. And I ghosted him. I basically convinced myself that we were never going to be on the same page because I was scared of being on the same page with him, if that makes sense. 
Um, so it's been five months, and since we've spoken, and he's texted me confused and hurt a couple of times, many times actually, and I wanted to respond, but I feel like that would be the worst thing I could possibly do to someone that I was so close with and then just stop talking to to just pop up again. Um, so I did the shittiest thing, and now I'm sitting here five months later asking for advice on how I can stop feeling so shitty and stop being so shitty. Um, I don't want to do this with anyone else, I've, and I want to open myself to relationships. I don't know why it's so hard for me to do that. I should have with him, but it's too late, and now I'm sitting here five months later crying over this guy who probably thinks I don't give a crap about him, and it makes me sick. And I just want to stop feeling this way, and I want to be able to open myself up to people. Can she, like, send him this episode yeah. and be like, she could. listen. Yeah, just... Because she still has feelings for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he probably still has feelings for her, too. I think he clearly does. Yeah. And just, that was like, very tell, eloquent. Just tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> just tell him all that. You don't even have to tell him. You can just, like... <laughs> yeah. She recorded... Did, was she a domestic listener? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because, like, if you're international, just send him the voice memo. Yeah. But no, may... I mean, A, you could have him listen to the podcast, Mm -hmm. but um, Melissa and I, uh, we (laughs) queens of ghosting. We are, yeah. We, if you, if you lived around here, identify with that. Like I've never. No, no. We we agree. We're not. It's we're not doing it well. Like we're not. We're not. We don't think it's the right way. (laughs) No, no, no. But people do stuff, and yeah. But we also prefer to be ghosted. Mm -hmm. Mm. So um, we are also heartless bitches. (laughs) Um, I think I there's I have a couple things of advice. A, the fact that you still have feelings for him is not something that I'm, I I ever really was used to with ghosting. So I think like it's not too late. I think like you're, you're aware of the issue. And I think as soon as you kind of let him in on the issue and like, this was like what, this is what I'm battling and struggling with. And I really have feelings for you. Then he knows what he's kind of signing up for. And he can also make that decision. Like he might be like, you know what? I want to date somebody who's really committed to this, Mm -hmm. but like give him the opportunity to be like, you know, maybe we can like stumble through this together and like we can try this out and no. So Mm -hmm. I say, A, listen, make him listen to the podcast. But then also there's uh, when it, if you, if you keep walking away from guys that you have like actual feelings for, I think just early on, I think you need to have, I I don't know. I think talking to your friends about it. Like for me, that's something like I, I would ghost guys that I like just would never tell my friends about. Do you like, because like, like people really know that I'm with somebody. So I would never have anyone who could hold me accountable Mm -hmm. for like, a, that's a shitty thing to do. Or Mm -hmm. also like, do you like this guy? Do you want to talk about it? Cause I would, like, I would just not talk about it. And mm-hmm. then no one would ask me. So then I would just be like, I'm not gonna think about the, if I have feelings or not. And then I'm just going to be done. Mm-hmm. I just would make it so isolated that I was the only, pr- he was the, I was the only connecting factor. Yeah. There was nobody else. And so I think if you can like for new relationships, talk to your friends, tell your friends when you're going yeah. on a date with somebody and like n- as frivolous as girl chat can seem, it's also can be really helpful to be like, do I like this person? Like, is this like yeah. my, fr- your friends can ask when you those talk questions. It, when you talk it out, it helps you yeah. discover how you feel. Cause you might yeah. really end up liking somebody. And also if you're so shut off, you're not going to know if you like somebody or if you don't, because mm-hmm. everybody's kind of at the same playing field. Like you're mm-hmm. not comparing and contrasting of like, well, these are the traits that I like. And these are the traits that I don't like. And I think it probably comes from like a fear of rejection too and relationships. Like I think at least like for me, like I was always afraid of like, what if I'm bad at being like being Mm -hmm. in a relationship? Cause I was like, let me just end this now before like I really hurt somebody. But in reality, you're still hurting people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. For me, I don't do well with feelings at all in everyday life, not just romantic. So like when I start feeling something for someone, I'll push them away because I don't want to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And so it's more of a protection thing, but I do know that I need to be vulnerable if I don't want to end Mm -hmm. up alone. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. what I had to learn. My friend had a very tough love conversation being like, you have to do this because I hate feelings. That's Mm -hmm. my number Mm -hmm. one most thing I'd said. I'm like, I fucking hate feelings. Like it took, like, I want to say it took God, like so much shit hit the fan in my life. And it took, I think like 
two and a half, two, two years for my boyfriend to see me cry. And he was like, my God, like, I thought you were made of stone. Oh and gosh. then like, there was like a week where I like didn't stop crying. And I was like, do you hate this now? And look what you've done to me. But like, I just like had, I, yeah, like I was very much the same way of being like, I don't, I would rather, I would rather be the one to like hurt myself in a situation and take myself out than let somebody else hurt me. Cause it's also yeah. a control issue yep. where I'm like, and I don't want to give freak. you the fucking control yeah. to hurt me. Uh -huh. I'd rather hurt myself and know what I'm getting myself into than like give you that kind of power. Uh -huh. But like no fucking way to like live. Yeah. Cause it also like, it's, yeah, it sucks. It sucks when you get hurt by somebody, but it also, it also makes you stronger after. And it like, and it also makes it like you can be hurt by somebody in small ways that you can like be very, af you can be really afraid of like in a relationship, mm -hmm. getting in a fight and like every mm -hmm. fight's going to be the breakup and every fight's going to be the end. Mm -hmm. But a, it, it, it's no matter what, it's going to build you up. And yeah. like, even those little fights between you and like a potential partner will bring you guys closer together, make you both grow and evolve and become better humans. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a, I still hate feelings. I don't, mm -hmm. don't like not into feelings, yeah. but I would definitely say like, I'm, I grew as a person and like have become a better person for like, I don't know, like going through those, that kind of shit. Like yeah. it's just not a way to live yeah. at all. Yeah. And it's not, yeah. I think I, as someone who has been ghosted before. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's so bad, but it's like the thing with being ghosted, the reason why it's so bad is because when you text someone, you're expecting them to respond and then when they don't respond you can't stop thinking about it yeah your br your brain is just like on a loop like what happened why aren't they texting me mm -hmm. are they hurt are they dead somewhere like oh my god you're I just ruined like ruined lives you're just like thinking about yeah. it constantly because you don't have a you resolution out of control with it in your brain mm -hmm. and so the the best way to make sure someone doesn't forget about you is to ghost them because oh, they will wow. just keep thinking about it the narcissistic person to me is like, it's torturous. Right. It is really torturous. So like, just know that when you go someone like that's yeah. what happens. I mean, I, yeah. And I think they're hot. Like my new rule on the podcast, if you guys have been listening around, like it, you can, you don't have to necessarily like, okay, I'm not gonna tell you not to like ghost anybody in general, but if you've been talking to somebody for a long enough time, you have to like you they deserve something yeah and I'm not a fan of closure I don't believe in closure but here right now you're on the other end of it like you're kind of that person who other callers would call in wanting closure from yeah. you yeah exactly. and you have that like you yeah. you you're not a dick like yeah. you're not just like um like obviously you're not like a misogynistic asshole like yeah, yeah. that's you are somebody who has something that could either make him be like, I want to continue to try this with you or make him feel like, cool, this wasn't about me. Yeah. So I think yeah. just that maybe that's your first step. Like you don't have Definitely. to like win him back or like, yeah, I think this is your first step. It's like kind mm -hmm. of, I ghosted you. I can't take that yeah. back, but like I can apologize for it yeah. and give you the reason why. And the fact that he's still texting you, he's still thinking about you. Yeah. So you might as well just be like, Hey, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. This is what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. This is why. And then let him decide like, oh, do I still want to continue yeah. with this? Or be like, no, thanks. It's not for mm -hmm. me. And yeah. And, and, and you tell him that with no, no, I mean, you can have a desire either way, but knowing mm -hmm. that that is just like the right thing to do. I think it's a, it's a good, it's a good step in the non-ghosting, which I still don't yeah. know how to do. I like ghost <laughs> people. I'm not even, I, I'm, I'm the worst. <laughs> Moral of the story. Don't ghost people. Yeah. Even if you like being spooky. Because we're so spooky. Boo. Boo. You whore. Boo, bitch. Get out the way. Is that a move, bitch? <laughs> move, bitch. That's yeah. a good, like, Halloween one. Boo, yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it also sounds like it's Casper December. the ghost is going to do that. <laughs> True. <laughs> it is December. Uh, okay. Is it time for the next? Or are we on to... Listener's advice. Listener's <laughs> advice. We're still workshopping the title. <laughs> you guys have any, if you little fuckers have any idea what we should call this, because this section is where uh, one of our callers or listeners will call in and give us some advice on a previous topic from an episode that they have some personal experience about or they just have a good opinion on or just a, a, an opinion. It doesn't have to be necessarily good. All right. So this is from the episode with Andrea Russett. And um, this is about somebody, the original caller uh, had premonitions and was oh. wondering if that was a real thing. And so mm. this is someone with life experience with that. Spooky. <laughs> 
Hi, um, I'm calling to comment on the episode with Andrea Russett, where the girl talked about how she thinks she has psychic abilities. So um, my family, like, we grew up very spiritual. And so all in all, um, we all have gifts like that. Um, my family always called them spiritual gifts and stuff. And, like, for me, I, um, I have, like, I call them deja vu dreams where um, I have a dream about something that hap is, like, going to happen, basically, and then it actually plays out in real life. Like, 50, at least 50% of my dreams, like, actually come true. And um, even with, like, thinking about someone and then seeing them in person and stuff, um, that's basically, like, manifesting the person into your space. It's actually, like, yeah, I call it a superpower because it's actually, like, a real thing. Like, so if she just um, looks more into it, and really studies up on it and um, really tries to get control of it, she can, like, I don't know, it'll really help her in life, especially how, like, she had a dream about how um, someone told her about someone getting cancer, and then she saw that someone she knew had cancer. Like, I don't know, just being able to really hone in on that ability and take control of it, it'll really help her throughout her life. Because um, I'm 17, so even when I go to school, like, and there's somebody, like, that I want to see, so, like, a cute boy or something, if I want to see I would that use that power for a think, fucking like, evil. okay, I want to see him, and I want to see him after this hour, because I have really honed in on this ability and really um, practiced it and stuff, so if I think about the person that I want to see them, then I'll see them, so I don't know. It definitely is a spiritual gift. She should really look into um, Christianity if she hasn't. Because that does have a large part to play in it, in my opinion, because I did grow up Christian. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. As that part I. confused and me. My grandmother would be like, that's witchcraft. That's yeah, I was going to say, isn't that not allowed? <laughs> it depends, I guess. Wow, but. all this does is make me bitter. I didn't book Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, <laughs> uh, premonitions. You have the gift or you don't. Or you don't have the gift. Also, if my 50% of my dreams came true, first of That's all, so creepy. I'd be dead. so pregnant. Like, <laughs> but, so many kids, so pregnant, so dead. Like, uh, I only no. remember my nightmares. But is what, who is it that's chasing you? Selena, Selena Gomez. Gomez. Oh <laughs> so, hey, God. this is how I live my life. First of all, I just had a dream that I was married to, like, one of the most... Oh, my God. Remi remind me after this. I have to text my best friend and tell her this. Because I woke up in the middle of the night and, like, screamed and, like, shook my boyfriend awake. And I said this name. And I was like, remember this name. And in the morning, he was like, you told me, like, you want me to remember a name? And I was like, I had a weird dream that I married some guy. And he said the name. I was like, ew, why did I fucking dream that I married that guy? From my, like middle school and high school so literally i would be married to like so many fucking random people yeah i'd be so fucking pregnant i would have cheated on my boyfriend so many times he would have cheated on me so many times i would have been murdered and put in like a suitcase i would have been eaten alive by wolves a wolf would have bit off my finger and i would have seen the mm -hmm. inside and it was hollow that was a recurring <laughs> dream for my entire childhood oh my god i know and it, i was in it was i was in um it was like peter pan and i was in like the house and then uh peter came but instead of peter coming we were like on a train and then like the train was like flying through the sky and then the I was in the caboose and then the caboose fell and then I was in like these trees and then these wolves attacked me and ate me and like wow. my like fifth grade boyfriend he like tried to save me um, and then I also had a dream that there was a Loch Ness monster at my elementary school and I was trying to run and there was like a pool at our elementary school suddenly but it was like also a creek and like everything was kind of pink and like I literally had my feet were cement blocks and I was trying to run through that <laughs> I would have fallen from many a buildings yeah. like tried to scream and nothing oh, came oh out oh my god <laughs> so much terrible terrible things and yeah again i would be so i would have so many kids i'd be so many so many pregnancy dreams all the time mm -hmm. so but also good for you for being mm -hmm. able to manifest like when you want to see somebody yeah. can you manifest when you don't, don't want to yeah, see someone that's my thing i, I don't would love see that them. yeah like if you like look super shitty and you're like i don't want to see anybody i know the second i think that in my head i see so many people yeah, i know yeah. so if i had that gift to do that I'd be like, cool. Yeah, and also, can into any of you use your psychic abilities like for good for me? If you yeah, can, same. let me know. Yeah, let We're us know. And I don't want to send us the good vibes. Anything yeah. bad. Like, I just want you to all <laughs> manifest and be like, I had a vision that Megan booked a great job that wasn't problematic and wasn't embarrassing, and it was going to get picked up straight to series. So I, I need you to. Here's the thing. Yeah. You you think Melissa 
is going to sell the show that she's writing. Yes. And Megan, I've already written a part for her. Yes, everybody, so. all the psychics, <laughs> all of you, I need you all to do your 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 spooky, witchy things yes. and make it happen yeah. for us. Yeah. If you're a real friend, come on. Yeah. Um, well, good for you and congrats on your... Yeah. your Tapping in. Tap in. Every time, when you tap in, I just think of like a headset. So it's like, let me tap into that, like a Raven style. Like, <laughs> like, hello, I'm getting, I'm getting a vision from above. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I was a big fan of that. So Raven, do you believe in premonitions or like um, that stuff? I don't know. You can say no. I, I mean, I've never experienced oh, yeah. it. So yeah. not to say that anyone else hasn't. I just wish every person who had one, it was like the um, psychic and holes. <laughs> where she's just like so cool I no, just I haven't seen it so <sighs> Madame Zamboni or is that the thing that they clean the ice cream I don't oh uh, Zamboni <laughs> yeah <laughs> so maybe that's not her name <laughs> it sounds kind of like that the Zambo Zamboni I don't know anymore <laughs> I auditioned for an ice skating movie recently uh, that's probably why well okay on that note guys <laughs> that's our episode Thank you so much for being on. This is amazing. Thank Please you. plug your book. Thank you. Please plug it. Yes. And show it to the camera. So you guys, no. you, if you want to watch on YouTube, yes. it's a fantastic cover. I was just flipping through it. The whole um, book. This is my book. It came out this summer. Um, it's called By Flea Bay. This is Dick Pics and Other Delights of Modern Dating. <gasps> It's like and, the new triple D. Yes. <laughs> and um, in it, I give a lot of adv dating advice and there's just examples from by Felipe. Um, all of my, it's basically like the book that I wish that I would have had in my twenties oh to mm -hmm. go online dating. I love that. I, I did all of the online dating. So you don't have to like <laughs> literally Craigslist. And yeah. And you can find out all of the secrets. Um, yeah. So I have the book. Um, you can order it or um, buy it anywhere books are sold. It's in all, all the bookstores. Oh, um, yes. And oh, I also have a podcast <gasps> called Fuck the, yes. the Single. The Single. Yeah. Very single. I love it. It's me and my co-host Allison Stevenson and we have um, usually a guest on every week and we ask them why they're single. Oh my God. Oh. So I'm not allowed on. <laughs> I was going to say our, uh, my friend Shireen was on it oh, too. Yeah. yeah and she used to be our camera yeah. person. Well. Oh my God. Yes. 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 Love her. Oh my God. Pod worlds collide. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Fun. I got to go listen to that episode yeah. and then be like, Hey, I heard why you're single. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she gets Just deep. In <laughs> she does. Oh, yeah. Fuck people yes. people yeah. really like open up. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a really great creepy talks, way for me to. Yeah. Yeah. She talks about her threesomes and stuff yep. oh so. i'm so here for that yeah. i'm gonna be subtle when i tell her though so she's like what <laughs> yeah wait what <laughs> yeah. what do we do you know what are you talking about i'm like i'm just i do that spooky. all the time like i i just um talk about things on on my podcast and then uh someone will say something to me and i'll be like wait how do you know that oh and they'll be like yes i listen to your podcast I'm like oh god i mean we're just honest yeah we are. we are. And we just like are really honest with our lives. Mm -hmm. Just being vulnerable. Yeah. Being vulnerable. Yeah, I'm trying to work on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, also uh, everyone can follow. We'll have your Instagram listed down yeah. below too. So people can check you out. Yes, please it's do. It's so funny, guys. And if you're having a really bad day or your friend mm -hmm. has recently been dumped or talk, it's it's one of my favorite ones to send friends. Mm -hmm. I've been like, as because I usually send like single, it's passive aggressive good. Zodiac memes. And now mm -hmm. I can send these ones, yeah. which are a little nicer. Because it's more shitting on other people. Uh, if you guys want to follow Melissa and I, our socials will also be listed down below. If you want to check out our website for the show, don't blame me dot show. Our Instagram, don't blame meme pod. Don't blame meme pod. Don't blame me pod. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that. Uh, if you guys want to call in for an upcoming episode, the phone number is 310-694-0976. And our email address is meganpodcast at gmail.com. So for all of you international listeners, you can email an audio file. Um, and yeah, guys, that's it for our show and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me, produced, directed, and edited by Melissa DeMont. Post-production sound by Chris Henry, production assistant Julie Carley, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I'll see you guys next week. And don't blame me if your life, you know, completely fucks up before then. <laughs> oh.